Hello, people on the internet, and especially hello to those of us, those of you from our church, Sonoma Springs Covenant Church. It is my week to bring you the devotional message, as Pastor Christy and Pastor Bobby have done their week, so now it's it's back to me in the, in the rotation. I'm wearing my Bronco shirt today in hopes that there is actually a full NFL season this fall and this winter. That would be something that would really help as far as I'm concerned, to kind of take our minds off of all that's going on around us. Well, I want to share with you uh, the devotional, and it comes from the office, the daily office readings. Uh, this is a series or several volumes in this series, but they give you a morning, an afternoon, or midday, and an evening reading, usually from an Old Testament reading, a psalm, and a gospel or a New Testament reading. And so this last week I started going back to this to do my own devotional time with. At times I will listen to audio readings, audio devotionals, but I decided I want to go back to just reading something myself. And this does not give you a devotional thought or a prayer after the reading. It's simply just scripture, uh, three different read scripture readings for the day, for you to stop and to take time for, for God in, in your day. But this last week when I was reading, it had me in Matthew chapter 14. And one of those readings that day was a story of Herod the Tetrarch, one of the, the rulers of Israel in place or in kind of serving as the puppet master for Rome. He has John the Baptist arrested. John was a prophet. He had been a forerunner of Jesus, and he has John arrested because John had questioned Herod taking his brother Philip's wife for his own wife. John said, you know, that's not good, that's not okay, it's not, not kosher, and because John challenged Herod, Herod had him thrown in prison, but he also knew that the people really held John in high esteem, and so he didn't want to do anything beyond arresting him. Well, Herod throws a party, and the, his new wife, Herodias, his brother Philip's wife that he had taken as his own wife, her daughter danced at this party. And we're told that the way she danced pleased Herod. We don't know what that means, whether she was just very skilled at what she did or whether she danced provocatively. Whatever it was, she pleased Herod to the point that when she was done dancing, Herod says, you know, I'll give you whatever you ask for. I was so pleased by how you danced. And so she goes over and conspires with her mother, and her mother says, well, give us the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And Herod heard this, and he was frightened when he heard it because he knew how popular John was with the, the people. But he had made this promise in front of all his gathered guests, and probably because he was a little drunk also. And so he has John the Baptist beheaded in prison and has his head brought and given to this his new wife and her daughter on a platter. But later in, in Matthew 14, it we're told that when Jesus heard about this, when he heard that John had been killed, we were told in verse 13, Matthew 14, verse 13, Now when Jesus heard of John's death, he withdrew from there in a boat to a lonely place apart. So as Jesus was grieved, he was saddened by what had happened to someone who was considered to be a fellow minister with Jesus. And he, he withdrew to a lonely place to, to grieve and probably to, to cry out to God. Some people would say, well, why didn't Jesus intervene? Why didn't he use his power, his ability to stop that from happening or to revive John the Baptist from the dead? Well, Jesus, in becoming human, in, in, in his incarnation and in coming to us, he, he was like us in every way. And part of being like us in every way was that he had to experience what it was like to be helpless, to be at the hands of the powers that be. And, and so he had to experience what it is to, to be in that situation. And for a lot of us, we can experience the, the grief and the helplessness, the powerlessness, whether it's at the hands of the government, the hands of the insurance industry, the hands of the medical establishment, just the, the hands of our, our culture in general, and we can be helpless. But I, I hope 
like Jesus did, that we have a place that we can go to, kind of that, that lonely, quiet place where we can just vent to God, we can just grieve before God, where we, we turn to Him as opposed to turning inward or turning to some other source to try to fill that, that need for God. So this is, this is my encouragement to us to, if you don't have a place like that, that, that quiet place to, to get away to, as Jesus did, he withdrew from there in a boat to a lonely place apart, to find some type of a place like that, to have that type of a place that you can go to on a regular basis, because as you know with life, there's, there's a lot of disappointments, there's a lot of pain and grief and sorrow, and we need to have that type of place to be able to turn to.